Riot has been releasing champions in 2017 that after you watch the teaser trailer, they make you go, what the fuck? You see Kled's teaser trailer on Facebook and you think, holy crap, that champion looks cool. Ivern comes out, you see the teaser trailer, you're like, wow, he doesn't do any damage to jungle monsters. How does he jungle? You see Camille and you see her hyper mobility and her crazy legs and you're like, oh my, what is, what is going on? Galio comes in with the huge explosion. You're like, holy shit, this looks like a cool tank to play. Zoe does the exact same thing. You watch her teaser trailer and you're like, oh my God, I want to play this champion. It makes people that currently play play league want to play zoe and people who stop playing league or don't play league want to get back into it and try out this new champion the problem with zoe and all the other champions that came out with 2017 is that those champions they all are fair and have clear counterplay like kled's alt is predictable and camille's squishy if she tries to engage in a team fight ivern doesn't do that much without his team galio's super reliant on his ultimate right the difference is that zoe doesn't have clear counterplay Oh my god, wow, that actually just fucking got my ass. Zoe's kit is unfun and unfair to play against. There are four main reasons why this is the case. She has no identity, she has heavily imbalanced risk reward, she has poorly implemented RNG, and her kit overall is a lazy design. And I'll talk about why in this video. So first things that we have to talk about is, what is Zoe's identity? What is she? Is she a burst mage or is she an artillery mage? Before they released her, Riot said that she was a burst mage, but then in the video releasing her, Freak referred to as an acting like an artillery assassin. Artillery assassin, whatever whatever that means. Well, what is a burst in an artillery mage? Artillery champions usually have high range, which means that they don't have a lot of risk in their kit because they don't have to put themselves in danger in order to do damage. Their damage is usually fairly low with low cooldowns. They're usually like poke champions like Ziggs, Zareth, and Velkos. Burst mages have medium range, so that means that their risk and reward is typically average at a medium. They have high damage and their cooldowns typically vary, but they're around a medium too. These are mages like Annie, Vega, and Syndra. And then we have battle mages. Battle mages are high damage, low CD champions like Ryze, Cassiopeia, Vladimir. The reason why they can have high damage and low cooldowns is because they have super, super low range. So the risk is really, really high. They can get picked off really easily. Okay, well, now let's compare that to Zoe. Maybe we can figure out what Zoe is. Zoe, when you look at it, well, she has high damage. Her one ability is 160% AP scaling. Her cooldowns are ridiculously low. Her Q is less than a four second cooldown at max rank and good CDR. And her E refunds cooldown if you land it. She's ridiculously, ridiculous high range. And even with her ultimate, her risk is really low because she doesn't have to put herself in position in danger to do damage. The problem is that when you have high damage and range and then you have low cooldowns, that leads to a low risk play style. And that's super unfun to play against. And this is exactly what old zero was when you have high damage and range it leads to no risk and then when you have low cooldowns with his soldiers you can kill people from a screen away do so much dps and not be able to get punished for it there's super little counterplay with this type of play style a lot of people are complaining about the damage aspect of zoe when that isn't really the problem the problem with zoe is that she has a extremely high reward play style with super low risk which should never ever be the combination her cooldowns are too low so even if they're very hard hit skill shots it doesn't matter when they're up every four seconds and you can spam them it doesn't matter if that's her only damage when it's up every four seconds her range is too high she never has to put herself in danger to do damage look at other champions that are super low risk like Xerath and Ziggs they don't do nearly as much damage as Zoe and have the same cooldowns having RNG on champions can work in this game as you can see with Twisted Fate and Bard Twisted Fate passive gives him random amounts of gold throughout the lane phase and Bard's chimes are like randomly spawned and they give him a little bit of damage the reason why these two work is because the little bit amount of gold that you get only has like a 1% overall impact on the outcome of the game same with Bard, the little bit of damage you get doesn't make that much big of a difference. Zoe's RNG is bad because it's not just a 1% advantage. You can roll like double Gunblade or, or double Ignites, a Teleport early on in lane, and that will win you the lane by itself. RNG that automatically wins you lane is gimmicky and super hard to balance. Zoe's kit is all over the place, and that's the biggest problem with it. So let's start with her passive. Her passive encourages her to auto attack, but her auto range is only 525, which is same as short range AD carries. This passive would make sense if they lowered her range, so she's like a combo burst mage like an ap ribbon but why would you put yourself in 525 range when you can just spam long range cues every four seconds with no risk this passive seems like a low effort way to give her more overall damage instead of fixing the actual problems with her kit the problem with zoe's q is that it has a combination of range damage and cooldown and you can have two without the last one but as soon as you implement three it becomes unfair you can have high range and high damage we actually haven't seen that in league before maybe you can consider lux but that's it and that's what freak referred to as an artillery assassin 
you can have high damage and and low cooldowns right and we see that in things like vladimir cassiopeia and rise right these machine gun mages and you can have high range and low cooldowns and that's what we have for artillery mages but as soon as you have all three that starts to go into this weird blurry zone of this is a toxic unhealthy champion and this is probably not good for our game People say that Zoe is like a super high skill cap, hard to play champion, when in re reality she's not. Her Q has less than a 4 second cooldown with good CDR and max rank. The problem with this is that when you start your Q, that's when the cooldown starts. So after you finish your first Q, it's basically like a 2 second cooldown. This is ridiculous because every time you land a sleep, it's almost like you guarantee landing a max range Q. The second biggest problem with Zoe's Q is that Riot has taught us that the way that skill shots work is you have a champion, you shoot your skill shot that comes from the champion. So it comes right here like a blitz hook, right? So it comes like this, and then it hits whatever. And Zoe breaks this rule because now she can launch her ball up here and start throwing things at random angles, random angles. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Where now you don't know where to dodge. The problem with this is that she can hide her Q in fog and terrain. And I'm not talking about her also being outside of fog where you can't see her. I'm talking about... You can see her, she hides her thing in fog or terrain, and now you see her animation of throwing the thing, and you don't know where it's coming from because it was hidden in fog and stuff. Whereas if you're playing like against Blitz, and you see Blitzcrank, and you see him start his animation for the hook, you're like, okay, I need to dodge this way. With Zoe, she goes, okay, I throw my Q back, and now let's say I'm playing against her, I can't see where she threw the Q. Now she uses her animation to throw the Q, and now I'm like, okay, where do I dodge? I don't know where this is coming from. Oh, it hits me from the side, and now I'm dead or in the fountain, right? It doesn't make sense. Zoe's W actually is so out of place. It seems like Riot had like the Zoe designers, and then they had some random other designers, and these guys were like, yo, I came up with this cool idea. Let's make a champion that can steal uh, summoner spells and, and items and stuff like that and use them in lane. And then the guys who were making Zoe were like, oh, we need an ability for our W. Why don't we just use that? And the guy's like, wait, why would you do that? They're like, we're doing it. And they just did it. And like now it's on her W. It has like very little synergy with her kit overall. Besides like flashing for extra distance, that's it. And once again, the fact that RNG is capable of winning lane for you is super gimmicky and unbalanceable. Zoe's E is literally the most overloaded spell in the game. There is so much to the spell that is broken, it is insane. Uh, I think Zoe just needs... That CC needs to go. Like, she shouldn't have mobility, high damage, and this ridiculous safe CC. She has to put herself in zero danger to throw this thing out. It has so much reward every single time she throws it. It's like... Uh, what's a good it's example of it? She it's like if you could two fucking Ornal team point blank every stun that saves her. Look at seconds. Ziggs, look at Zareth. All of her stuff, all of their self peel lasts like 0.5 seconds. Walls should not extend the range of her sleep. This makes no sense. So let's say that, let's say I'm Zoe, right? And then I cast a spell, and this is a wall. They cast a spell through the wall. It's going to go through the whole wall, and then it's going to go the length of the spell. So you can literally cast it like a screen and a half away from somebody and sleep somebody on the other side of the map, which is absolutely ridiculous. Somebody explains this perfectly on Reddit, so I'm going to post a Reddit comment up for you so you guys look at. But could you imagine this with Blitz or like Morg or Elise, where uh, their hook, instead of going through the wall, now it extends past the wall. So now she can hook you like 1,600 units, which is ridiculous. The biggest defense that I see for Zoe's sleep is, oh, just ward the fog of war or just ward behind walls, right? Okay, well, let's compare this to Fiddlesticks because he has the same counterplay, right? You just ward walls and you ward fog so you don't get ulted on by Fiddle. The thing with Fiddle is that his ultimate is a fixed distance. It's 800 units. You can't ult any farther past that. Zoe's sleep, on the other hand, you can... There's walls in this game that are like 1,500 units. How the hell are you supposed to ward behind that? The next part of her E that's broken is that if you land the sleep, it increases your damage of your next attack, whether it's your passive or your Q. This doesn't make any sense because when you land your sleep, you're basically guaranteeing that you land a max range Q also, which does a bajillion damage. If you already landed a skill shot and you're already going to land a max range Q, why do you get rewarded more for more damage? The next thing is that you get, you get rewarded for missing your sleep. Why do you get rewarded for missing a skill shot? If you miss your sleep, it leaves like a like a puddle on the ground that lasts for four seconds. And if you step in it, you get drowsy and you get slept. The power of missing your sleep is actually ridiculous. It's essentially like a Vagar cage. If you're like sieging or like defending against a siege and you intentionally miss a sleep, you can just zone people off a tower with like a giant Vagar cage that is spammable. Okay, so you land your sleep and then you get rewarded for, with extra damage. Now, also, when you land your sleep, you get the cooldown gets reduced for some reason. There are only a few champions in the game that get rewarded with reduced cooldown for landing a CC. And two of those are Thresh and Gragas. 
So let's compare Zoe's sleep to Thresh and Gragas. When Thresh lands a hook, he gets reduced cooldown, but he has to put himself in danger to use the second part of the ability. Gragas, when he lands a body slam, he has to put himself in danger to use the CC. Zoe, when she lands a sleep, doesn't because the range of her E is literally like 2,000 units when it's behind a wall. Zoe, when she lands to sleep, she doesn't have to put herself in danger, so why does she get rewarded for hitting it? It makes sense that Thresh and Gragas get rewarded because they're in danger. Zoe's not in danger. So first, you get rewarded for landing your CC, which allows you to land your combo. So like Lux and Syndra and Vagar, it's the same thing with Zoe, right? You land your CC, you get to use your combo. Well, that, that's it for Lux, Zoe, or Lux, Syndra, and Vagar, right? Zoe, on the other hand, Zoe gets rewarded again with extra damage, gets rewarded again with reduced cooldown, and don't worry, guys, because if you miss it, it's going to drop like a Vagar cage on the ground that sleeps anybody who steps in it. Zoe's R looks super cool, but if you actually think about it, it does almost nothing. It increases your Q distance, and it gives you different angles to shoot from, but that's literally it. When you use your R, you're at a fixed position. You can teleport to here, but you have to teleport back to here, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't do anything. You're not mobile. The biggest thing that I found when I played Zoe is that the first game, you're going to die so many times because you think that your R makes you mobile, but it doesn't because it doesn't really do anything. And because it doesn't do anything, the cooldown is so short because it doesn't really do much. So how do you fix Zoe when she has so many fundamental problems? There's three options, really. The first one is that you have to push her into being either an artillery mage or a burst mage or even a hybrid like Lux. And the reason why Lux works is because her cooldowns are super, super long. Or you could turn her into like a like an AP combo mage, like Riven, sort of, if she was a mage. And what I mean by this is, first you'd have to reduce her ranges so that she's considered like a burst mage, right? You would reduce her Q and E ranges, but you would keep the cooldowns and damage. This would make it so that she would be forced to take risks to do any damage. Next, you remove her W because that makes literally no sense why it's on her kit. And you replace her current ultimate and put that ultimate as her W. So now her portal jump is on her W. Now you make her new ultimate a spell that when you press it, your next portal jump doesn't bring you back to the starting spot. And what I mean by that is when you use her portal jump, right? So you use her portal jump and then she comes out here and then she comes back to the starting spot, right? Instead, now what happens is you use your portal jump, you come up to here, and instead of going back to this one, you go down this portal and come back up so that when you press it, people don't know which portal you're going back to. So now you have mobility, and now you can do cool outplays and increases the skill gap like ridiculously. So you get this like two charges on like a 45 second cooldown, similar to like how Akali works with the charge system. It would make Zoe into like a huge skill gap fun champion that is like a combo mage and has to take risks to be rewarded. Ultimately, a champion that is so low risk with high reward is toxic and unfair to play against. And hopefully Riot understands this and future patches, they'll address it. I hope that once Riot realizes this, they don't gut her, but instead they change her kit so she's more fun to play and more fun to play against. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and thank you so much for nearly almost a thousand subscribers subscribers which is crazy this channel would be nothing without you guys and thank you so much for the support make sure you guys like and comment and do all that stuff but i'll see you guys next time